to sign up for uh, poinsettias. I think there's a form in the bulletin. If you have not had a chance, it's on the back side. Um, and you'll want to get those to, um, who is collecting? Connie? Okay, Connie's right over here. Um, and if not, you can just leave a check and uh, we'll process it through the office. And other uh, announcement, on Friday afternoon around 4 o'clock, I had shared last week that Gloria Miller was in declining health. She did pass away at Manor Care in Dallas Town. Now, because of uh, the needs of the family and all of those things that are you know, important at a time like this, there will be a memorial service, but it's going to be delayed. And they've asked if they could not have it sometime in the new year. And so in January sometime, you will certainly be kept uh, abreast about what's happening so that those of you that knew Gloria and want to support Ed and their sons and families uh, can join in that time of remembrance and celebration. Uh, again, it will be sometime after the new year. Appreciate your prayers for others that are listed on the prayer list. Um, it, you do have a ministry um, by reaching out through prayer that is included in the bulletin in, in its entirety every week because we feel that's important uh, as a congregation to support one another in prayer. There are many announcements in the bulletin. I encourage you to look through it. It's almost like a newsletter. There's a lot happening at St. John's this time of year. In fact, this evening, our community uh, Thanksgiving service will be held at Bethlehem Stonepile Church. We invite you, if you're interested in joining with the community, to worship and to join together. And thanks for the freedoms that we have in this country, for the blessings of God abundantly. You could join us in that community service. Those are all of the announcements. We encourage you to now turn your hearts and minds to the sacred act of worship. <coughs>
constant source of comfort, a companion in hard times. God is our strength and song, filling our hearts with gratitude and our voices.
together in our unison prayer and invocation in the bulletin. Let us pray. Generous God, you have given us so much. Give us one more thing. Give us thankful hearts, because we know our hearts can be hard and cold. We often hold on when we should let go. We are clutching when we should be spending, worrying when we should be generous, doubting when we should lean on faith. We are fearful instead of trusting in your everlasting care. Open our hands and our hearts to the bounty of your love, which cares for the flowers of the fields, the birds of the air, each child who howls, every parent who worries, every adult who struggles. Fill us now with grateful hearts as we pray the prayer you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Please be seated. <laughs> 
choir and by faith for getting us started in worship on this Sunday that we acknowledge with gratitude all the ways that God cares for us. I'd invite you to join us in our responsive litany that speaks to just that. To the God who created the heavens and earth and shaped us in the womb of our mothers. <laughs> To the God who relentlessly pursues us to woo us back to himself. To the God who hears the cry of the poor and of the oppressed. To the God who answers the prayers of his people. To the God who sent Jesus Christ into the world to carry our burdens and forgive our sin. Give thanks to the Lord for his His love endures To the God who sent the Holy Spirit so that we may be transformed into the likeness of Jesus and be empowered to serve others. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. To the God whose reign will never end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Uh, 
the Federal Trade Commission found out that clinical studies showed that only one in nine kids had that kind of improvement, and half the kids weren't affected at all. Okay, one more. Let's try one more. See what you think. I like this one. A well-known brand of athletic shoes recently claimed that their shoes would help burn calories. Okay, that's for me. We need that bad. The sneakers cost about $100, but if they work, it's worth it. And many who bought them claim that instead of helping them to burn calories, they actually cause them to have injuries. Uh -oh. They are seeking $5 million in damages from the company. Now, how many people are going to believe sneakers can, can help you lose weight? Do you believe that? No. Well, what we're thinking about today is how often that we see things, and they come up with different claims telling you how good things are, when you really need to realize that some things we shouldn't believe, because they aren't. Jesus' time, he even warned his, his disciples by telling them that, when, that he, they were to watch out for people who would try to deceive them and tell them that their word was better than Jesus' word. It's kind of hard sometimes when you hear certain things and you're never quite sure whether it's true or not. But with Jesus' word, we have all his teachings to look at. So if someone tells you that something is better than Jesus is, it's important that we look at what Jesus has said, and if we're still confused, we can say a prayer asking God to help us. So we want to remember that we don't believe everything we see, but we do believe in God. Okay, do we say a prayer? Heavenly Father, Jesus warned us about false teachers. Help us to read your word and understand its teachings so that we will not be easily misled. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So do not consume yourself with questions, what will I eat, what will I drink, what will I wear? Outsiders make themselves frantic over such questions. They don't realize that your Heavenly Father knows exactly what you need. Seek the kingdom first of God and His righteousness, and then all the things will be given to you. God is still speaking. So each year, in recent years, the Stewardship Committee has met as we look forward to presenting to the congregation a budget and the needs of the church. But it's become increasingly important to our Stewardship Committee that we ponder the nature of Christian stewardship as a part of that act. So it's not that we're just going to look at a budget and say, oh, we approve of that. But it's really reflecting on who are we as stewards. This is the second week in a three-week series, Stewardship Is. And last Sunday's bulletin cover had this image on the front of it. Stewardship Is. And at the bottom you can see, or most of you, stewardship is everything we think, say, and do after we say, I believe. So, what is stewardship? For starters, stewardship is how we spend our time and employ our talents and gifts. Stewardship is how we care for our bodies and make healthy choices. Stewardship is how we set our priorities and money, I'm sorry, and make healthy choices. I'll get that. Let's do this again. How we set our priorities around money and possessions. And stewardship is how we practice our faith. How we care for the environment, manage our relationships, and basically how we end up choosing to practice our faith. We participate in God's mission by becoming stewards of the gift that God has entrusted to us. These gifts are everything that we have, our time, our talents and skills, and the treasures or material resources that God has given to us. So what are we to do with these gifts? The Hebrew and Christian scriptures invite us to give. Paul, the early missionary of Jesus, said this about giving. He said, each of you must give as you've made up your own minds, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And then Jesus himself said, this is a modern version, the uh, contemporary language version, version of the message. Jesus said, give away your life. You'll find life given back. But not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving not getting is the way. Generosity begets generosity. <coughs> throughout the scriptures, throughout the Bible, we are invited to become stewards. God invites us to give as an act of charity and compassion. God invites us to give as a form of friendship and to share in fellowship. God invites us to give as a means of supporting worship in the temple, in the Hebrew scriptures, and in the churches or within the congregation in the Christian scriptures. And God invites us to give as a demonstration of our devotion to God. The main point of last Sunday's message was that stewardship is living God's love. This morning, our focus is stewardship is following God's word. After all, everything has been given, I'm sorry, everyone has been given things over which we have charge. Material possessions, other living things, and even knowledge and information. So throughout the entire span of our lives, we are and will be stewards. The question is not, will we choose to be a steward? 
or when will we start becoming stewards, but rather the question is how and what kind of stewards will we be? Will we follow the cues that we receive in God's Word? When we are babies, we are given a teddy bear. When we have a baptism, oh, we have a baptism today, but we didn't get you a teddy bear, Mrs. Lee. <laughs> Neither am I going to carry you around the sanctuary. <laughs> I already had somebody in the back, one of the ushers, say that he was going to take a picture of that. <laughs> At our baptisms, when they are infants, we give them a teddy bear. When we are babies, we are often given teddy bears or another stuffed animal to keep, to hold, to play with, and with which we can be comforted. Over those early years, our teddy bears often become threadbare and tattered. But that doesn't mean the toddler has been a poor steward, but rather they have kept the teddy bear close to their heart and their physical body, whether in the sandbox or at the dinner table. Our stewardship journey starts with proximity, as we learn to hold on to something, or someone close that we can cherish. Now, when we are in preschool, we're often given tricycles. We flex our four-year-old muscles as we navigate the narrow spaces inside the house until mom or dad says, no more, or we run into grandma's ankles. <clears throat> then we get sent outside where we discover the driveway or sidewalks are far better than the living room anyway. Some preschoolers have been known to wash and even wax their tricycles while dad was cleaning his car or truck. Stewardship has progressed from proximity to property with possibility. Now, when we are in grade school, many of us are given our first pet. Maybe it's a puppy at Christmas, or a kitty cat for our birthday, or for those who cannot have domesticated animals in the house, maybe you get a goldfish or a gerbil. This is a huge step in our journey of stewardship. As we move from possessing property with possibility to becoming caregivers, <clears throat> with responsibility. But stewardship has only just begun. All throughout our days as junior and senior high school students, we are expected to learn more advanced skills in reading and writing, mathematics and analytics, citizenship and social science, life skills like computing, banking, perhaps cooking, and maybe even driving. What we are rarely told is that we are to be stewards of information, allowing this knowledge to become a foundation on which we build our lives. This is when our stewardship moves from being a caregiver with responsibility to becoming an interpreter of information. And make no mistake about it, our responsibility as stewards of information includes a huge dimension of moral choice. As we learn about the dangers, let's say, of smoking, and then are given our first chance to choose to smoke, maybe cigarettes, maybe marijuana, we are given information in this age about sexual activity, and then some begin to experiment with what that means. Our lives as stewards have now become multi-dimensional. Now after high school or trade school, our stewardship as young adults really begins to take shape as we start to choose a pathway for our life. Hopefully we take stock of our own personal interests, our own personal aptitudes, and perhaps even listen for God's calling upon our life and begin to seek either further education, skills, or start walking on a direction, maybe even into employment. Unfortunately, all too often in our American society, the primary stewardship motivation for job hunting 
and career paths returns to the preschool notion of stewardship as property with possibility. And the main goal of millions of young people is to get a good job that pays a lot of money so that we can buy our big boy and big girl toys. Unfortunately, this stewardship approach hinders what should be the next and natural progression in our stewardship journey. Satisfaction through sharing. This part of our life's journey can blossom with the choice of a life partner, someone with whom we share our joys and sorrows, our health and our weakness, our material blessing, and perhaps at times even poverty. Finding the deep satisfaction of giving to another person can be one of the truest expressions of being fully human. We learn this through Jesus Christ, who though he was one with God, he humbled himself, took upon himself the form of a servant, and became a human being with all of its limitations, giving, giving even his life in the profound demonstration of sharing. For those who enter a committed partnership of sharing, children can be a natural progression. And now we have reached the advanced levels of stewardship. Our lives as stewards become ever so much richer, not only through the sharing of material and physical and educational support for our children that they need, but as parents, our children, and for those who have never been parents, but maybe have served as teachers or leaders in a variety of children and youth activities, we become stewards of the values, beliefs, and traditions that we can pass on to the next generation of children. How many young college grads and young parents get stuck in their stewardship journey because they're only seeking to accumulate property? Or they are unwilling to enter into the deeper levels of sharing for the reason that those were the only stewardship values they had ever been taught. And each of us here today, because to one degree or another, you have all chosen to be stewards, today at least, of the rich stories, traditions, and beliefs of Jesus Christ, or to honor those who have chosen to follow them. Have you ever noticed, that's our children at the last year's Christmas program, have you ever noticed how enthusiastic I am about Christmas and Easter? How I love to engage the congregation in worship through observing all of the seasons of the church year. Have you ever noticed how I love to share in your baptisms, in the rite of confirmation here at church, in weddings, and yes, even journey with families during times of death and mourning. This is all because I highly value the Christian scriptures. This is because I believe God would have us attempt to follow in the ways of his son Jesus and the teachings of the scripture. And this is because I feel in Christian community, within the bonds of the church, yes, even within this church, St. John's, it can be a place of extravagant welcome for all people. A place where God can change and heal the brokenness in our lives. A place where we can offer continuing witness to our local community and the world through our acts and our messages that Christ is alive. Our stewardship journey, dear friends, is in full motion. And it is not by any means over. For what we do in and throughout the course of our lives, our generosity with our time, our talents, and our financial resources, even how we pass our faith on to the next generation and to our friends and to our neighbors, demonstrates that all of our life is a journey of stewardship. Yes, even how we are remembered at our death, and that image was from All Saints Sunday just two weeks ago. Even 
how we are remembered at our death is the final chapter in our stewardship journey. In the passage just prior to what Fenelia read for us from the Gospel of Matthew today, Jesus said these words, where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. May it be that we as stewards treasure the words and the teaching of Jesus Christ and his invitation to give to others. For stewardship is following God's word. May it be that we choose to do that and so become God's stewards. Let us bow to prayer. Loving God, thank you for your eternal word that invites us constantly to share, to share with others, to give and to grow, to grow in our faith, believing that you will provide all that we need in abundance. Help us to be the part of abundance for those who are struggling, especially on this Thanksgiving Sunday. We offer to you our grateful praise for the many ways you care for us. And we're grateful for the many agencies and institutions and ministries that reach out to those that are less fortunate in our community even now. We pray for the ministry of the many food pantries that surround us, the one at Grace Lutheran, the one at Bethlehem Stonepile Church, and for community reach with their choice food pantry, which we support. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless many people and motivate us to give and support these ministries that touch others in their times of need. Help us to be stewards, stewards always, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. This morning, there are several ways that we are going to be responding to God's word. The furthest back thing, we'll be responding to God's word through offering ourselves and our gifts through the time of offerings uh, that will support the ministries of this congregation. But before we do that, we're going to share in the sacrament of baptism. Mrs. Lee is asked to be baptized as a part of her faith journey here at St. John's. So we're going to share in the sacrament of baptism as a response. And then we will welcome new members into the ministry of this church, Mrs. Lee being one of three, and I will introduce them a little bit later. But right now I would invite Mrs. Lee to come forward. <coughs> Dear friends, come. Come to the water. Come, you who are thirsty. Come to the water. For the mighty acts of God are known to us through water. Water, that primordial pool of creation over which the Spirit hovered. Water that cleansed the whole earth for new beginnings and new growth. Water that divided so that slaves could walk to freedom on dry ground. Water, our bath, our tomb, and our womb. Water by which we are adopted as sons and daughters of the Most High. Come to the water and give thanks to God, whose mighty acts are made known through the water. Please join me in the responsive call to consecration. God be with you. And also with you. All water is holy. From birth waters to mighty rivers of justice. From a refreshing sip to the renewal of our stream. All water is holy. A sign that we have passed through troubles, and refreshed by a gift we did not earn, sustained by a love for us. This water is a rainbow sign of God's continuing love at work within us throughout our lives. Bless us in this gift of the Lord. Amen. Dear friends, baptism is the sacrament through which we are united to Jesus Christ 
and are given a part of Christ's ministry here on earth. Thus, baptism is a visible sign of an invisible event, the restoration of people to God. Baptism also reminds us of the outpouring of God's Spirit upon those whom God has chosen. In baptism, God works in us the power of forgiveness, renewal by God's Spirit, and the knowledge of the call that we are God's people always. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this is the water of baptism. Out of this water we rise to new life, forgiven of sin, one with Christ, members of Christ's body. I'll put this aside for just one moment. This is Lee. Just a couple of questions. Is it your desire to express again through the act of baptism your faith in Christ? And is it your desire to follow Christ always. Then let us pray. Loving God, thank you for this confession of faith. Faith in Jesus Christ, who has been with Mrs. Lee and continues with her on her journey. We ask now that these waters, warmed and blessed, would be a blessing to her and her family and to each and every one of us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. You want to touch the water? How would you describe this water? Oh, wonderful. It's nice and warm. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Barshinger, our custodian. <laughs> Mrs. Lee, I take this water. We know we cannot survive without drinking water. We cannot survive without the sacrament of baptism. And I make the sign of the cross upon your hands. I know for years, Mrs. Lee, you have washed dishes with water. You've washed clothing with water. You've put water on the table for your children and family and sustained them in love and well-being. May you be sustained by the love of Christ and the well-being of the church as I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you soon and give you peace always. Amen. When we come to the sacrament of baptism, it's a time of making covenant. And so I ask of you, the congregation, and say, Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer to them the gift of grace and baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your support, care, and love to the one who has been baptized? We promise our support, care, and love. And I will tell you that I know that Diane and uh, where did our, um, there's a, a group of ladies that sit on the back pew and they have already demonstrated support, care, and love to one another. And may it be that we all as a congregation demonstrate that support, care, and love to Mrs. Lee and her family. God bless you. I have a baptismal certificate for you, but no baptismal there. <laughs> My hands are a little bit damp, and yours are probably too. I'm going to give this to the family. And I'm going to give you, instead of a bear, how about a hawk? <laughs> and at this time, I would invite Colin Stem, and where's my other new one? Oh, Marjorie Sports, and their sponsors to come and stand with us up here on the next level up. And I'm going to help you with this step. Yes. <laughs>
Whenever we add to the membership of St. John's, it is indeed a blessing. It's growth. It's new life. And each person that joins with us brings something from their own faith journey. They bring with them their joys. They bring with them the struggles of life. And so written on the minds and hearts and faces of each of these are gifts and graces to be given and concerns that we as God's people will share. And so we have Mrs. Lee and her sponsor, Diane Schoff, and uh, we are so glad to welcome you. We have Colin Stem, better known as CJ, and Mary Barshinger, who came to know him seven years ago as grandchildren were in our preschool program. And Colin and Linda have sat over where they're sitting today in worship for many years. And we have Marjorie Schwartz. And this is her sponsor, Diana Arnold. And Diana Arnold is one of the first to reach out a hand to welcome newcomers. And Marjorie and Diana have become close over this time. We're not going to deal with the liturgy in that was written in the, the program. We don't need to open our Bibles and our hymnals. Just let them set aside. Let's be in this moment and acknowledge the joy when God sends a new one into the household of faith. I remember the joy of my children being born. I remember the joy of the grandchildren arriving. And for us in the Church of Jesus Christ, this is a moment. This is like an adoption because two of these have come to us from other congregations by letter of transfer. And so we're adopting them into our faith and family. And Colin is reaffirming his faith in Christ in our midst. This is special. It's important to me and to all of us. And so I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Do you affirm before this congregation that it is your desire to seek to walk in the words and the ways of Jesus Christ? And if so, just say yes. Do you affirm that covenant making is an important part of our church life? You were all here this past Sunday when we talked about that. And we as a church are going to make covenant with you and you with us that we will journey together. Is it your desire to be a member of this church? Yes. And so I turn to you, dear friends, and say, will you promise your support, care, and love to these who are now about to join our church? Simply say, we promise our support, care, and love. We promise our support, care, and love. And let me tell you, that is not said without strong commitment. Each of the sponsors knows through their own life circumstances, there are ups and downs in our own personal lives. There are times of happiness and times of brokenness. And this church, St. John's, has stood with Diane has stood with Mary, has stood with Diana, and they as your sponsors can tell you that St. John's will stand with you, Marjorie, with you, CJ, and with you, Sue. That is our promise. And it's not just the preacher that will. This congregation will. And for that, I am most grateful. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask that the characteristic that could be used to describe St. John's above all else would be love. Allow us to love these whom you have sent to us with the perfect love of God. And allow them to love us back. And we will thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I have certificates for you, and I thank Wendy for preparing them. <laughs> we, um, I don't always think of everything that we should do on these special Sundays, and, and so it's good that, that she kind of backs me up.
And on behalf of the members and the consistory, I extend to you the right hand of Christian Fellowship. Welcome to St. John's. Welcome to St. John's. Welcome to St. John's. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you. At this time, we will invite those who are going to receive our offering to come forward and wait on you as together we are stewards here at St. John's. <laughs>
other than to send you on your way, on a mission. And so far, it's going to be two statements. Maybe next week it'll be three. The first statement is, stewardship is living God's love. And today, I say stewardship is following God's word. Dear friends, go out from this place to be stewards. And as you do, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I'd invite you to join us. The words will be projected on the sanctuary or on the screens to sing our closing song. Go now in peace. Oh.